While much of the gaming world is anticipating new Xboxes and Playstations arriving on their doorsteps over the next couple of weeks, much of the VR industry is anxiously anticipating its next high-powered bit of kit. And that's this guy. This is the HB Reverb G2, which, believe it or not, is a new member of Microsoft's Mixed Reality line of VR headsets. It's got razor-sharp resolution, pitch-perfect audio, and even a helping hand from Valve. But can a mighty spec sheet help it overcome some pretty mighty competition? So the Reverb G2 is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster of a device. HP has taken Microsoft's MR reference design, kept the same 2160 by 2160 per eye resolution seen in last year's Reverb, then bolted on two extra inside out tracking cameras for a total of four on the headset, redesigned the Windows MR controllers and then formed a partnership with Valve. That gets it an index like strap, new lenses and the exact same off-ear speakers you find in the original index. The result is a device that boots up into Microsoft's Mixed Reality platform, but then can access pretty much all the content on Steam VR. Now, HP sees this as a sort of hybrid device for both professional and enthusiast users, and it fits both bills pretty nicely, though it's not without issue. Talking strictly about the headset itself, the Reverb G2 offers crystal clear VR with almost perfect comfort and audio. The LCD displays offer some of the highest resolution VR we've yet seen, beating out both the Quest 2 and the Valve Index. Now, as with any other VR headset, it's actually quite hard to reliably show you what the bump in screen resolution can do. But if you've tried the Oculus Quest 2 recently, rest assured that this is a noticeable bump in fidelity. So in Skyrim VR, I found myself suddenly noticing the sharpness of blades and arrows in a way that I hadn't really seen before in VR. And I was able to make better distinctions between ferns and fauna as I walked the forest floor. In Google Earth VR, I could pick out granular details as I went on a whirlwind tour of last year's trip to Japan. And yes, Half-Life Alex's stunning opening shot showed me a richer version of City 17 than I've ever seen before. So yes, there's still a little screen door effect fuzziness, and the LCD panel means you don't get the same color range as, say, an OLED screen. But the Reverb G2 still offers easily the best optics I've ever seen in a VR headset. And as a result, it brought me closer to virtual worlds than I ever felt I've really been. I also didn't spot any of the dreaded god rays, apart from when loading up apps and maybe in loading screens between games. Meanwhile, on the audio front, Valve's high quality off-ear speakers keep you really connected to both the real world and VR with crystal clear, powerful sound. Not having an ear or headphones physically touching your ear is a huge plus for immersion, although there isn't a 3.5mm jack on the Reverb G2 if that's your preferred solution. But funnily enough, these aren't my favourite things about the Reverb G2. That would be how this thing feels on my head. The G2 is a really, really comfortable headset. The soft padding on contact areas and fantastic weight distribution keep it really snug while you're wearing it. It's actually about 100 grams heavier than the Oculus Quest 2, but the better weight distribution means you won't think it is. All of that added up means that this thing does something that precious few VR headsets can really do, make you forget you're wearing it. I do wish it had a rear dial like the Index and the Elite straps on the Quest 2 so you could find a faster fit, but once you have found the sweet spot, this thing is pretty much dreamlike to wear. Plus, Reverb G2 has some really fantastic maintenance features, which include a front flip, which I believe should be written into law at this point, and the faceplate easily comes away so you can plug and unplug the headset in a matter of seconds. So by now, it should be pretty clear that I'm a very big fan of the headset itself. Unfortunately, I can't quite say the same for the Windows MR controllers, which you'll be using with the vast majority of content. Now don't get me wrong, these things are better than their predecessor. You know that thing with that ghastly trackpad thumbstick hybrid but it's not much better. This enormous tracking ring makes it kind of a bit heavy and awkward to hold. The handle is also a little short in my hand and this sharp curve at the bottom causes some friction in my palm. Plus there aren't any sensors for finger placement like you'll find on touch and knuckles controllers and the haptic feedback is pretty weak and quite noisy. Plus when you turn it on, it kind of looks like a Christmas tree. The controllers do at least have all the expected buttons and triggers, which means you can play pretty much every Steam VR game with them, though you might have to visit the bindings menu sometimes. For example, I found it hard walking around in something like VR Chat and had to get the analog sticks right. Also, the triggers feel just a little shallow, like I'm not actually pulling the trigger of a gun, they're just, like they're millimeters off. But the battery life seems pretty good so far, which it should be considering they're both running off two AA's. 
Now, kind of bizarrely, when it comes to tracking quality, it's pretty much the same story between the headset and the controllers. Adding two extra cameras to the Reverb G2 itself delivers great solid inside out tracking. And across all my testing, the headset specifically hasn't really put a foot wrong. But again, the controllers suffer from some pretty regular hiccups. Now, if the controllers are clearly within the camera's field of view, they perform very well. There's no noticeable latency or jitters. But if you drop them towards a more comfortable height, like your waist, for example, they start to kind of mess up a bit. Now, a lot of the time, if you drop your hands to your waist, obviously you're not looking at them, so you're not going to notice those problems. But in some games, if you have, say, a sword or a persistent laser pointer, like in something like Paper Beast, you might well notice the angle of what you're holding is a few degrees off from time to time. I mostly noticed it when handling finicky objects like the arrows in Skyrim. Now, personally for me, this isn't fatal when traded off with the G2's incredible display. But I suspect a lot of the enthusiast VR gamers this thing is geared towards will be put off. The controllers will also struggle if you bring them up closer to the camera, which can cause problems with mechanics like archery and boxing. And predictably, there's some occlusion jitters too. They'll also struggle with intense lighting conditions like, say, filming with two bright bulbs directed at them, so just bear that in mind. If faultless VR tracking remains a top priority for you, you should stick to Steam VR Lighthouse tracking for now. Personally, I can accept that trade-off if it means I don't have to place a load of sensors around my VR play space, and I know a lot of people will agree with me. That said, the sheer amount of wires needed for a G2 is a tougher pill to swallow. Alongside this tangled knot of cables, you'll find two breakout boxes, a connection to mains power, display port, and USB. C with an A adapter. Now I'm sure there's a big reason why this all had to be connected up this way, but frankly when the Oculus Rift S has one cable with a splitter between DisplayPort and USB, and Oculus Link just requires one USB-C cable, this is a bit too much. HP does include a helpful little bracket to run the wire around the back of your headset, but you'll need to be careful with it, otherwise you'll end up doing this. Did you break it? I also just really, really wish HP had come up with a wireless solution for this headset because even after a few months of using the Quest 2, going back to wires feels pretty archaic. And speaking of archaic, let's just quickly touch on the Windows Mixed Reality platform. Now this is kind of the distant third of the three main PC VR ecosystems, and Microsoft left it pretty neglected since it launched in 2017. It's really easy to set up the tracking and it's very simple to jump in and out of VR every time. But the lack of any real changes and updates means that you'll be seeing the same old VR apps from 2017 when you first boot up the platform, and there's not too much that's native, exclusive, or even worth doing on Windows MR. Plus, I've encountered plenty of strange bugs like audio randomly switching between different sources, and SteamVR sometimes very literally getting confused about which controller to show me. I really hope the release of the G2 and the upcoming timed exclusive support for Microsoft Flight Simulator pushes Microsoft to do a bit more with the platform in the future. But as it stands right now, Windows MR is actually just kind of a hurdle between you and getting to Steam VR. So should the Reverb G2 be your next VR headset? Well, the answer kind of depends on how much you personally want to push VR. Look, this is not a mass market device like the Oculus Quest 2, and if you stack the two up side by side, the Reverb G2 doesn't fare too well. It's double the price of the Quest 2, has a big wire, and needs a PC. Even if you're a super high-end PC VR enthusiast, the regular controller tracking issues might be a compromise too far for you, especially if you're into hardcore simulation games or intense action experiences that demand fast reactions. But if the sensory experience is your absolute highest priority, then the HP Reverb G2 does offer the best way to see and hear VR, if not interact with it. I really wish its controllers were better because they turned the G2 into a no-brainer. As it stands though, this is an enthusiast VR headset that some will feel makes too many compromises. Thanks so much for watching our review. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notifications button, and we'll see you soon for more Reverb G2 coverage.